Eu vou fazer uma pergunta que não é de conjuntura econômica. Eu queria pedir para você, Joseph, definir o um modelo econômico em vigor no mundo hoje. Como é que você definiria o capitalismo, o capitalismo oligopolístico? É, e mais, é, na verdade, interessada em saber a definição, eu queria saber qual que você acha que é a relação desse modelo econômico com o status das nossas democracias no mundo hoje. So, I think uh, the model that people talked about uh, was a very competitive economy uh, where um, competition ensured efficiency and uh, everybody would benefit. That was the way it was described uh, by Friedman, Hayek, lots, uh, lots of people. But when you see the market economy of 2023, uh, what you see is something very different. What you see, what some people describe as a rent-seeking economy, which means you look for whatever profits you can get. Uh, it's not competitive. Um, Warren Buffett, one of the wealthiest uh, successful American investors, uh, emphasized how important it was for success to build walls, to become a monopolist. And Bill Gates made some money by innovation, but most of his money came by creating a monopoly. And he was, you know, Microsoft was convicted of, uh, was uh, accused and, and convicted of, of being anti-competitive in U.S., in Europe, and in Asia. Uh, so, but these are just examples, and it's an exploitive economy. To give you some more examples, we have companies like uh, uh, the makers of the opioids yes. that created the opioid addiction that led to so great that the life expectancy in the United States has plummeted. Uh, we have food manufacturers that created a childhood diabetes crisis in the United States. And we have the financial companies that created the 2008 financial crisis. So we, we, we have to recognize that we don't have that competitive ideal that's in the textbook that everybody who studies economics uh, reads about. It's a very different kind of economy. So to me, one of the, the agenda going forward is how do you uh, bring this under, make the economy more competitive, make it more responsive to uh, the necessity of the green transition, stop the exploitation that has been a lot of the basis of, of the market economy. I think we can do it. But it's uh, going to take a larger role for government. And we've seen why we need government, pandemic. Just think of where we would have been without government efforts to create the vaccine and distribute it. Wasn't done perfectly, but the government, without the government, it would not have been done at all. Uh, and we would all be suffering from, uh, from, from the pandemic. That's just one instance where everybody now recognizes that government has to have an important role. So, so we have to get more balance uh, in our economy. I call it progressive capitalism. Mm -hmm. Some people call it a social democracy. Now that comes to the second part of your question. I think the failures of this unfettered capitalism, neoliberal capitalism, the fact that those in the bottom and even those in the middle have not shared in the prosperity has given rise, not surprisingly, to a lot of anger. Uh, and that has uh, fed the kind of populism that uh, is putting us on the road to fascism. Mm. Uh, and that's been a real worry. I, I wrote about this in my book, The Price of Inequality, and I said one of the worries I have uh, is that we are providing a fertile field for a populist that will lead us, a demagogue. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, I was too right. <laughs> uh, and 
it's not just in the United States. Uh, you have Bolsonaro here. There, there are lots of examples of these populists growing up. It's not the only reason. I don't want to say inequality is the only reason, mm -hmm. but it created a fertile field. Sad. 